A recent poll revealed most respondents say it's time for Ute and his two other ruling general buddies hang their helmets. Meanwhile, authorities uncover the reason behind the devastating nightclub fire in Chonburi and the Thai economy braces for a semiconductor shortage. All this and much more coming up in today's program. Today's show is brought to you by Tiger Property. For all your real estate needs in Thailand, link in the description below. You're watching Thailand News Today, bringing you the uh, latest top stories in Thailand and beyond. My name is Jet Gunther, and in our first story, a new poll from the National Institute of Development Administration, also known as NIDA, showed that the majority of people want Prime Minister Prayut Chan Osha to wrap up his role as Prime Minister at the end of his eight-year term on August the 24th. There have been different interpretations of the current constitution and whether the Prime Minister is eligible to continue his role or if he has now served his eight-year term. The constitution allows for Prime Ministers to serve a maximum of two four-year terms, making a total tenure of eight years. However, the most recent iteration of Thailand's constitution was ratified in 2017, just five years ago, making Prime Minister Prayut's current term technically his first under this constitution. So, is he eligible for another term or not? According to this NIDA poll, taken between August the 2nd and 4th, the majority of people want Prayut's tenure to end this month. Some 64% of those polled said that the Prime Minister's eight years are up and he should announce his departure before the end of his term on August the 24th. The poll surveyed 1,312 adults over 18 from a variety of incomes, jobs, and levels of education. While the majority of people feel Prayut should confirm he is leaving at the end of the term, 32% think that the court should make a final decision. The remaining 2.8 or so percent declined to comment on the matter. The poll also asked about the trio of top generals ruling the country. They are General Prayut, General Prayut Wong Suwan, and General Anupong Pao Jinda. A solid 80% of people polled did not want any of those three to be involved in forming the next government. And perhaps emboldened by this new finding, Deputy Prime Minister Anutin Shan Mirakun rushed in to say that if people want him, he is willing to step in as the next Prime Minister of Thailand. Anutin, who also has been serving as the Minister of Public Health throughout the tumultuous pandemic of delayed vaccine rollouts and xenophobic comments, said that if the citizens of Thailand want him to be their next leader, he is willing to be a candidate. Anutin is the leader of the Pum Jai Thai Party and traveled to Lopuli province yesterday to make a formal announcement of the party's new nominees in the coming election for members of parliament. It is the tradition of the Pum Jai Thai Party, which currently controls three ministries, to make the party leader the prime minister candidate as well. So Anutin said he would step into the role if he must. If I have to be the prime minister, I will be. Oh, what a saint. Cheap and flammable sound absorption panels are thought to have caused the tragic fire at Mountain Bee nightclub in Shonburi province. The total death toll rose to 15 as a man injured in the fire died in a hospital on Saturday. Around 40 people were injured in total. The owners of Mountain Bee soundproofed the ceilings and walls of the nightclub with flammable sound absorption sponges, causing the fire to rip through the venue in seconds. With 50 people inside the room and only one small exit route, several people could not make it out in time. Survivors reported that they saw burning sound absorption panels melting and falling on top of people, causing their deaths. The blaze is reminiscent of the New Year's Eve 2008 fire that occurred at Bangkok's once-renowned club Santika Pub in Ekamai. A total of 66 people died in the fire and 103 people were injured after fireworks were shot at the ceiling inside the venue.
The court had acquitted the owner of Santika Pub of gross negligence causing death, despite him not having signs of showing the fire exits in the building and not installing enough emergency lights in accordance with the Building Control Act. Mountain B, on the other hand, was open illegally, was built illegally, did not possess a proper license, and was open past the hours specified by law. The venue had previously been shut down several times before the owner was most recently arrested in July, yet the venue managed to open last Thursday. Mountain Bee's 27-year-old owner was arrested and faces charges of reckless behavior causing death and operating a nightclub without a license. Thailand's Federation of Thai Industries said it fears China will deny Taiwan the raw materials needed to make semiconductors that the Thai automobile industry is dependent on. The FTI made it known that the Thai motor industry is desperate for semiconductors, that there is a worldwide shortage, and if they can't get them imported, it means higher car prices, including EVs. Ironically, it was only on Friday that Thailand revealed it could benefit from the mini trade war between China and Taiwan and was looking to supply a number of different food products that the mainland would ban. Tensions escalated between China and Taiwan because of a visit to Taipei by U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. In response, China embarked on a series of military exercises around the Taiwan Strait and allegedly followed it up by banning the import of some fruits and fish products from Taiwan. Surapong Pai Sit Patanapong, vice chairman and spokesman for the FTI's Automotive Club, said that if the China-Taiwan relationship escalates and Beijing decides not to export silica, the semiconductor shortage will worsen. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company is the world's largest contract semiconductor maker and imports 90% of its total silica sand from China. The company supplies chips to many industries, including the automotive industry. If its production is disrupted, the ongoing semiconductor shortage will worsen. As it currently stands, automakers have had to suspend production of some car models and delay deliveries. Some need to consider increasing the prices of cars and motorcycles due to the rise in semiconductor prices. There has been a major jump in searches for Airbnb accommodation in Thailand. The data shows that between January and March this year, the number of searches for Airbnb accommodation in the kingdom shot up by 180% compared to the same time frame last year. Both Thai and international travelers especially search for Airbnb accommodations in hotspots including Bangkok, Phuket, Pattaya, Chiang Mai, and Koh Samui. This news comes after the Thai Hotels Association said last week that South Thailand's hotel occupancy is expected to rise during the high season from October to December. Around 80% of hotels in Songkhla province have reopened after the Thailand Pass was scrapped on July the 1st. The council's president said Songkhla expects around 800,000 foreign visitors in 2022, or about 40% of the 2 million visitors per year before the pandemic. According to the Tourism Authority of Thailand, the kingdom has drawn 3.3 million foreign tourists between January and July this year. In July, the Tourism and Sports Ministry said it expected about 9.3 million foreign visitors to arrive in 2022. So it remains to be seen just how many foreign visitors will make their way to the land of smiles this year. But with the major jump in Airbnb searches from both Thai and international travelers, it seems so far that tourism in Thailand is slowly but surely making a comeback. And that's all for our report from Thailand News Today. The show will be back tomorrow. Meanwhile, you're now up to date on The Tiger.